Park, Maryland takes it of Ohio State. Mason steps in. It was great having Gary Williams. I'm so Bruce. excited about it. All right, I can't wait to see it. All right, <laughs> and that'll be he's hot. a legend. He's our legend. All right, he is. A no offense to Turgeon, coach. he's our legend. He is. He and is. the follow in his footsteps was not easy for Mark Turgeon. It's still not easy. It's still not easy. It is. So Mason, you always have an interesting take on the game. Maryland seemed to be running away with it, and suddenly it was a one possession game. That's a big yeah, game. Cla yeah. uh, what? Classic Maryland to uh, start holding the ball, start just. They run one set, kind of, and then they try and switch out of it and go into this burn clock, and every time it comes two, three minutes too early, and they let the other team back in. Every once in a while, just keep playing the offense. Move the ball inside to out. Play your game. Instead of holding the ball to their 12, 10 seconds left on the clock, and then being taking these four shots, and they always come for the same players, too. If I'm an opposing coach, I can say, when it gets to that point, you got to look at almost two guys, Cowan, Fernando, and if it goes to anybody else, you almost can bet on it reversing back to one of those two but guys. But wouldn't you want those two guys to take the shot if you're running Maryland? If you're running that kind of set and you get into that kind of trouble, you always – you're right. You always look at your best players. Right. I, I'm never too critical after a win, especially when Eric Ayala missed the second half and Sorrell came in and played a hell of a game. 14 points, and Bruno didn't score in the first half. I think he wound up with 10 or 11. And uh, to me, you know, it was a look. We said, we all agreed at the end of the year, all right, 12 and 8 would get us in the dance. Maybe a buy. It's not going to get us a buy. But 12 and 5 right now. Wayne, we all would have signed a contract for it. For 12 and 5, absolutely. Bruno, another double double, 14 points to 10 rebounds. You know, Ayala got sick and didn't finish the game out. Cowan, 19 points. He still has room for four rebounds and four assists. What did assists. he shoot? What did he shoot today? He was 6 of 10 from the floor, 3 of 4 from the arc, beyond the arc. That's four excellent. Five. Over 50%, he hasn't been there recently. You know, I missed the first half because I was at the lacrosse game. We'll get to that later. But uh, that's an excellent turnaround for him, Mason. Yeah. Um, if you look at this game, uh, I'm looking at for those turnover stats. Maryland with 15. I uh, do not see the Ohio State number. but We'll get that up there they in a moment. Weren't as big turnovers in the first half or in the early in the second half the turnovers kind of prevented maryland from pushing away but when it really came down to it late in the game when it got close maryland didn't necessarily make those same mistake passes that they did against iowa or throw the ball away they kind of just got right back into their groove of being able to push the game all right so for the game ohio state only seven turnovers ohio state 23 for 63 11 for 33 beyond the arc Maryland with the 15 turnovers goes 23 of 47, almost 50%, 6 of 17, 20 of 25 from the line. Uh, Caleb Wesson is a big dude. He had a couple threes tonight, too. He did. I actually like his game. I yeah. like watching him. He gives Bruno trouble. That is a big, physical-type body you're going to see at the next level. But when Maryland got it to Bruno, and decided they were going to go through him, it changed. Yeah. He started to score. It's a win. It's a win. Yeah. Now you got three games left. You got Penn State on Tuesday. We both know what kind of game that's going to be. We don't know. I mean, they beat Michigan there. And then we come back home to Michigan a week from Sunday, a week from tomorrow, which will be our biggest game in, what, two, three years here? Oh, every year there's one. A couple of years ago, Mello hit the shot and beat Michigan State. Last year, yeah, it didn't but this, really this, come this, to that. It's, it's different. Why is this it's, different? It's ranked against ranked. It's actually yeah, this a time we're a really good team in my eyes. Okay. All right. All right. And, and we move up in the rankings this week. We still Definitely. Uh, the win against Iowa, a road ranked win, kind of verifies Maryland a little bit more. And then coming back 
against an Ohio State team that is still, I mean, they're floating around the eight line in the tournament there too. I think they might be two quad ones for Maryland this week. Uh, around the country, some ranked teams have lost. I think it pushes Maryland up into the teens. Right. Okay. Well, you know, at this point, it doesn't matter. There's we a need... trap game on Wednesday. That's right. the game that concerns Tuesday. Tuesday? I think it's Wednesday. Tuesday? I actually don't know. Well, we will take a look at that. Uh, when we come back, we're going to take one more break here. We're going to talk lacrosse in a second with Bruce, who drove in at halftime from an Double Doubleheader today. Doubleheader. We'll be back in a this moment. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. NPS Nonprofit Services has the technology and know how to achieve your nonprofit goals. We have all the tools that you need for your nonprofit to be successful, including tech support, consulting, development strategies, and business continuity to make sure your data is safe on prem or in the cloud anywhere all the time. Call NPS at 877-797-8776. We're easy to reach and easy to work with. So, Bruce, Maryland tops Navy. Lewis Dubik gives the Terps five goals today. You know, last week we wanted to talk to Dubik after the game, but they chose Jared Bernhardt and Curtis Conley. I said, man, you got to start looking at Dubik. Dubik's playing some ball. Why? Because they over-concentrate on Wisnowskis and Jared Bernhardt. It's, it's almost the Dylan Moss story when the teams used to over-concentrate on Rambo and uh, Peacock. And Dylan Maltz, as the year went on, became better and better. Dubik, five goals. Come on, five goals. And uh, Logan, and what's his name? Bernhard had three goals and three assists. And Logan had three right. goals and five assists. All right, what? I don't know. Big game, big win. And now we got the man coming SVP on. SVP joins in. This was a lot like the games we used to walk over from the dorms. The place was packed. It was bumping. You had a good time coming down here today? Always, always. And uh, up 16, it was a lot better than up two. Um, this team, <laughs> this team's. It's like it's the the goods. It's like what's the old, the old line about the girl with a curl in her forehead? When she was good, she was very very good. When she was bad, she was horrid. This team's ceiling is high, and then they fall asleep for five seconds and I'm like are we ahead by two points yep. and uh, it was scary for a minute but um, this Maryland's got they've got some stuff man and I was I was I was texting with a coach the other night whose team is gonna be a very high seed and uh, he said I wouldn't want to play Maryland uh, I really wouldn't want to play them. they're really really talented I said I agree with that uh, just got to value the ball a little bit more but I don't know Maryland had 10 more than the other team, so I can't. I'm sitting here kind of nitpicking, but I just thought it was going to be an easier uh, emotional ride to the finish. But there are there are nits to pick. Yeah, they, they yeah, are, there are. There's always, as Bruce says, that ball comes bouncing out to the three-point line. The other team picks it up and hits a three, and yep. as it's happening, that? Why I, I don't that? know. I think it's part of. I think it's part of the badge of honor of being a Terps fan. I think you just have to suffer. You have to suffer a little more than uh, than maybe some others do. Whatever. <laughs> hey, listen. They've got they've got a shot to have the double bye. They're currently fourth in the league. They got a game at Penn State. Then they got Michigan here next Sunday. I mean, just beat Penn State, have a big weekend next weekend, and see where we're, see where it takes. The you. bottom line is this: they're 12 and five in this conference. Correct, and that's fantastic. I agree. That's 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 what people should. That's what we should all focus on. But but Terp fans have a we have a tendency to have our eyes drawn to the negative, and I think that that's to our detriment. You know, you, you don't benefit from focusing on the, ah, they turned out, who gives a bleep? Like, they, they won They won today by 10. It's the bottom line. Yeah. That is the bottom line. Our first Saturday afternoon conference game of the year. And no coincidence, it was a sellout. Yeah. And also, they're playing well. Has this gotten crazy with Friday night games and Monday night games? I hate games? it. I hate it. I mean, why not Saturday afternoon? That's the day. I hate it. Um, well, the, the one Saturday game that Maryland had, they played at Illinois. Uh, they played Illinois in the garden. in the garden, which was I hope I hope that never happens again. You can't you can't give up home conference games. They're too important. Well, it was taken from us. I understand so that. I'm, I'm just trying to be politically correct. It was garbage, and it should not happen again. It better not happen again. They're too important, and you need Saturday games. This, this and this is a different philosophical conversation. 
conversation that the Big Ten needs to deal with. You can't play 6.30 games a weeknight here. You can't, you can't do it. And I don't know if the league doesn't know or doesn't care, but you're going to have a half-empty building for the first half. And when they played Purdue, that's what that, you're playing a top-10 team, and nobody can get here because it's a 6.30 game. It's ridiculous. got to leave from Baltimore at 3.30. That's what I'm saying. The schedule's been awful in terms of when the games are played. But Saturday game today, joints packed. They get a win. Next Sunday, middle of the afternoon against Michigan is a sellout. It's going to be a great atmosphere. So you just you enjoy, you enjoy what we get. Last, last comment. My favorite uh, section on sports, on sports talk, is the bad beat section that you have. <laughs> I love it. Well, I hope you're not on the wrong end of it. Right. It's amazing how many people comment about that. I, a, a guy told me the other day, my 12-year-old son, that's his fav favorite segment. I said, <laughs> that's bad news, bro. Because he goes, no, no, he doesn't bad or know about it bad. He just knows it's bad. I said, well, that's good. He should, that should be a cautionary tale to your son. But a couple of those football games you showed, yeah. it was impossible. 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 But it happens every single week, and that's why the segment has been as popular as it's been. Tiger, is he back? Well, I won. I mean, he won an event last year. So to me, yes. Um, He'll win another major. I, uh, maybe one. I, we, I was having this conversation with my roommate who, who's here today with me, and, and uh, I, I think I really think he's gonna. A lot of people don't, but whether it's this year, this year he's think of this year. Three of the uh, venues: uh, Pebble Beach, uh, Augusta National, and Bethpage. He's won on those before. Right. So I mean, that's a positive thing. But it's tough, man. A lot of young guys out there that can really go. It'd be fun if he won another one. But when he won last year at East Lake, a lot of people thought that wouldn't happen. So in a way. I mean, to me, that that's getting back to the top of the mountain in a way. Yeah, there's no doubt, and it's yeah. what's more fun than following Tiger? Not much. No. When Maryland wins. Yes, no doubt and we about got it. to do that today, Scott. Thanks for being Thanks, on. It's my pleasure. Home. I'll see you guys next Sunday. Yes, All sir. All right, go Turks. Okay. All right, go thank you. See you, boys. Yeah, All right. Thanks, man. All right, thank you. Thank you. up. Two big wins today. Lacrosse, 14 to nine over Navy. They're five and zero now, ranked number three in the country. And here, the Terps, 10 point winners over Ohio State. They're 12 and five in the conference. Mason thinks maybe 17 or 18 in the country, but all in all, with the exception of Tottenham losing, it was a great day. So have a great weekend, everybody, and we'll see you here next Sunday night after the Michigan game.